Allah my heart speech Your mercy is what I beseech Keep in my heart your remembrance And in your deen allow me to advance Help me in my quest Permit me to pass the ultimate test Help me in my quest Permit me to pass the ultimate test Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala nabihi wa mustafa Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala wa ba'd My dear respected brothers and sisters Welcome to another live edition of our program Ask Huda We slightly changed the phone numbers due to technical problems And the new phone numbers should appear on the bottom of the screen as follows For those who would like to give us a call during the live show Area code 002 then 01005469323 There will be also a WhatsApp number for your free dial-in Area code 001 then 347806025 Again the WhatsApp number is area code 001 then 347806025 and we're live on my page as well. That's M. Salah official. The first question we have is from Abdul Malik Shaban. Abdul Malik says, <coughs> Assalamu alaikum. During the last 10 days of Ramadan, can one pray tarawih and also go to uh, go in for tahajjud uh, the same night? Well, according to the hadith of Aisha, the mother of the believers, may Allah be pleased with her. Who said that whenever the last ten nights of Ramadan would enter, the Prophet ﷺ would do three things. The first is he would fasten his waist belt, which means this is an indication that he is about to do a hard labor. And he would wake up his entire family and he would stay up for the whole night in worship. So, Taraweeh night prayer the Prophet ﷺ used to worship throughout the whole night during the last 10 nights of Ramadan which means it is definitely recommended to pray Taraweeh and also follow the Taraweeh with Tahajjud and for your info brothers and sisters the good news I wanted to share with you is that staying up and making zikr or reading Quran or praying or even eating the sahur meal all of that counts as ibadah or worship um, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim um, Aslam Sultan Aslam says in his question in Eid prayer I have noticed that the Imam in some mosques do seven and some do five and so on the takbir he means what is the correct number and should we uh, raise our hands in each takbir or not? In the Eid prayer, in the first rak'ah, the Imam makes seven takbirs. Seven takbirs. That is other than the beginning takbir or the opening takbir, takbiratul ihram. And it's a sunnah. And the followers should raise their uh, voices and raise their hands as well. So you recite it out loud. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Seven times. Then when he rises to the second rak'ah, the Imam also makes five takbir. So seven in the first rak'ah and five in the second rak'ah. Um, Farah Khan. Sister Farah says, My sister and her husband has a family of three sons who are married and they live together. Is zakah eligible for her? You mean whether she's eligible for zakah or not? Ayah number 60, chapter number 9, Surah At-Tawbah. What does Allah the Almighty say in this regard? He says, إِنَّمَا الصَّدَقَاتُ لِلْفُقَرَاءِ وَالْمَسَاكِينَ If your sister, if your nephews and nieces, if your brothers are poor and eligible for zakah to receive it, from people who are not related to them, then it is more worthy for them to receive it from you, and it is more worthy for you to begin by giving zakah to your relatives and brothers and sisters, nephews and nieces. It doesn't matter whether they're living together or living separate, 
And what is the cause of the poverty? Is it disability? Is it retirement? Is it debt? If they're eligible, begin by them. And for giving the zakah in general, and the sadaqah, even if it is a voluntary charity, to family members who are not among the ears, yani parents and children, you don't give them zakah. Grandparents and grandchildren, they are not eligible for your zakah because the financial support is due upon you. But brothers and sisters, nephews and nieces, when you give them, you receive double reward. The reward for giving your zakah, the reward of the charity, and the reward for upholding the ties of your kinship. May Allah bless you and your families. Um, the following question is uh, Bon Lion. The questioner is asking, I voluntarily let my sister use my money, but she will pay back whenever she can. No pressure in payment. Is it halal to use the money for Hajj? Please answer, uh, Sheikh, because I'm planning to go for Hajj. You see, the question is kind of vague, and it is not just one question. It is multiple questions in one. The first question is, with regards to the debt, when you give your sister, when you give your brother, when you give your mother, when you give a stranger any money, it must be in the form of debt. It must be documented somehow in writing, witnesses, video camera, so that people would know that this person borrowed from you as a creditor certain amount of money. And also you must specify the time frame, the time span, and whether it's a gift or a loan. Most of the problems that we encounter trying to uh, counsel people, answer their questions, or reconcile between opponents is because when one person gave the money to another, he didn't specify a time. He didn't say, well, I need the money back in three years. How are you going to pay it? Monthly, by monthly, uh, annually, by annually. And whether this money is a debt, a loan to begin with, or is it simply a gift? People do say, well, I thought it's a gift. He didn't tell me, or he didn't ask. So big confusion. The longest ayah in the Quran is known as ayah to dain. Imagine. The whole ayah is talking about regulating the debt, what the creditor should do to secure his or her rights, and what the borrower, the debtor, should do in order to fulfill his commitment towards the creditor. إِذَا تَدَيَنْتُمْ بِدَيْنٍ إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ مُسَمَّنْ فَاكْتُبُوهُ It must be documented in writing. But sometimes I trust the person, and there are witnesses. Witnesses will do it. So that if any person, if any party, whether the creditor or the debtor die, the other party knows their rights or their duties and obligation. The second question in your presentation is, can I perform Hajj with money which I borrowed? Yes, it is permissible. As long as the loan that you borrowed, you did not borrow it with interest, and it is not due right now, and you're capable to pay it off on time. Because Allah is not asking you to do anything beyond your capacity. Look at the ayah, 97 of Surah Al Al Imran. Only if you can afford it. If you cannot afford it, you don't have to perform Hajj. But whether it's permissible to take loan to go for Hajj, it is permissible as long as you assume that you'll be able to pay it back. Um, <clears throat> The following question is, again, uh, Samgita Sina. Her question is, um, let me know the actual rak'ah of Taraweeh for women. It is not any different than for men. Taraweeh for men or women is the same. The ideal number of rak'ahs for Taraweeh is to pray eight rak'ahs two by two, then you pray with either three altogether, or two rak'ahs, then tashahud and taslim, and one. If you can afford to pray more, and if you can afford to recite a longer recitation, or to break it down into more than eight rak'ahs, that too is permissible. The Prophet وسلم, was reported by Aisha as praying only eight, then the witr. By Abdullah ibn Abbas in the sound hadith, he prayed 13 rak'ahs altogether. 
the companions of the Prophet ﷺ prayed 21 rak'ahs, and the companions would never do anything which is an innovation because they understood from the Prophet ﷺ that he said, Salatul Laylihim Masna Masna. So, what matters is as long as you keep praying at night, two by two, two by two, and by the end, you pray the width one rak'ah, that will do it, insha'Allah. Next question is. Uh, line is asking I'm 43 old can I go for Umrah or Hajj without a mahram we did discuss the difference of opinion in this regard before and according to Imam Shafi'i and also Imam Malik may Allah have mercy on them it is permissible provided you don't have a mahram to travel with you number two you're traveling with a company which is described as safe so they will take care of you as if you're a family member, group of women, travel agency, where you have a lot of people with you, you will not be on your own, you will not be stranded at an airport here or there. According to Imam Abu Hanifa, and according to Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, and also this is the obvious meaning of the text of the hadith, a woman shouldn't be traveling a travel distance alone without a male mahram, even for hajj or umrah. May Allah guide us to what is best. Sister Zainab of C is asking, can you do it on behalf of a dead friend? Well, it seems like, uh, mm, okay. Her first question is, is it allowed to sponsor someone to do Umrah on behalf of a dead family member when you are in the UK? Yes, it is permissible. And it is permissible to pay them for their cost and for the time that they spend. Provided you should choose a person who is trustworthy, he would actually do it. Number two, the person who's doing Hajj or Umrah on behalf of another person, whether a lay person or a person who is physically unable to travel, should have done his or her own Hajj and Umrah first. So if you hire somebody, who says I would charge 50 grains and you're okay with that fine pay the 50 grains and ask him first have you done your Umrah have you done your Hajj yes I did and I've done it for many times and I do it on behalf of others is that permissible yes that is permissible um, and when you said can you do it on behalf of a dead friend yes you don't have to have blood ties with any person in order to benefit them with the good deed you do. Like um, just yesterday, um, Allah inspired me. This is how I perceive it. That inshallah, I'm going to do Umrah on behalf of our sister Razan, who was martyred in Gaza, in Palestine, by the pure evil Israeli sniper. She was a nurse and she was, um, you know, hunted down while even raising her hands and her white coat was soaked with blood I don't know the sister personally we never met she's a mother of a child and she's a nurse so is it permissible for anyone to do Umrah on her behalf yes it is permissible and you will be rewarded for it and the reward for Umrah will reach the sister and this is my intention inshallah if I have a chance to do Umrah I will be more than happy to do Umrah on her behalf, insha'Allah, Azza wa Jal. For the following question, Nusheen, Sister Nusheen is asking, can a fidya be given in the form of money? Well, when Allah the Almighty says, fafidyatun, it'amu miskin, then it must be given in food. It'am, Allah said it'am, food, okay? Um, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and prescribes or the Prophet sallallahu prescribes the fidya as feeding then it must be presented in the form of feeding or food whether raw or cooked and if you can't there are in OGs non-profit uh, organizations uh, um, who actually do collect the fund and they will redistribute it by buying food and giving it to those who are eligible sister uh, okay I would just uh, 
say the first name sister Fatima from the USA without a male guardian how should a divorced girl look for a future husband in the USA and I think we have another similar question from Zainab from the USA in fact sister Fatima sister Zainab and all the uh, single moms or the sisters who've never been married before I gotta tell you that it should be our duty every Imam in the local community his post and his task isn't just to lead the prayer and to show up to say Allahu Akbar and lead the prayer or give ta'aleem these are not everything that he has to do one of the most important tasks is a social work for the community you know marriage counseling solving problems um, whenever I know that there is a brother who wants to marry all the community members should trust the Imam he should be trustworthy enough to be trusted so that I will go and I say Imam Saab or Sheikh or Mawlana or whatever or Ustaz because in the US now everybody is Ustaz okay I have a daughter she's at marriageable age I'm well off I want to get her married but you know I'm afraid that you know maybe I wouldn't really get the right person you know better yes he should know better he should have established relations with the family uh, members and the community members of the community to know that this family they have a girl at a marriageable age and this family they have a boy at a marriageable age and they can afford it try to introduce them to each other and keep it very confidential okay making an effort in order to get those who are not married never been married before or divorced or widows is actually not any less important than the prayers than fasting than building a masjid or raising funds for the community it is as important as establishing the building and giving classes and ta'aleem so yes sister uh, if you have a local Imam he should be capable to do that and I'm advising myself and out loud my dear colleagues uh, in Europe in the States this is your task you should shoulder your responsibility Assalamu Alaikum Omar from Gambia Assalamu Alaikum Omar Wa Alaikum Salam how are you Yasser? I'm doing fine Alhamdulillah thank you for asking yeah, I have a question. Okay. Yeah, I want to know the rule in, in Islam. Like somebody who left his wife for like eight years, and on his return, he made the wife having three children on his, on his behalf. He so did what? Is it, is it permissible? On his return, he did what? I said the wife bear three children on his absence. The wife has three children? Yeah, on his absence. So I want to know what's the, the ruling in Islam. Is it permissible for, for him to break the marriage or? Okay, and for eight years he didn't know that she conceived three times and she gave birth three times? Are you kidding me? Yes. It is something very serious. Because the guy is my uncle. My dear brother and your uncle used not to call his wife, used not to know anything about her? No. They were hiding it from him. They were hiding what from him? Hiding that his wife is with somebody else? Because look, Yeah, Akhi, because he, Akhi Umar, he, was, he was doing it secretly. All of a sudden, when he returned, he found out that the, wa the wife has three kids. Uh, Habibi, my dear brother Omar, I'm sorry, I, I can't buy that. I can't buy that a wife who's married she would have an illicit relationship and she would conceive for nine months and she will give birth and secretly all of a sudden oops we have a baby and then she will do it again and again and you said that they were keeping it secret they were hiding it from him you know something is not straight it could be because accusing somebody of an act of adultery is such a big deal in Islam and it's such a major sin so it could be that because perhaps I'm not sure that the husband disappeared and she filed for a separation after a year or two and she got a separation verdict and she got married somebody else 
you know, she got married on a small scale where only her family members or parents know that she's married. So I'm not aware of the circumstances. But on the other flip, if somebody found his wife pregnant and give birth when she was, when he was absent, yani he's never been with her, then this is complete act of adultery. It is punishable for in Islam with severe punishment. And even in the secular law, there is a punishment for that. And when you say, is it permissible for, her, for him to separate? Of course it is permissible, and it is his right, and it is his right to demand also, you know, a compensation for all what he paid. May Allah guide us to what is best. Um, I beg the viewers to understand that when you call and when you ask a question, I'm not answering you only. I'm answering all the audience. So if the question doesn't make sense, I represent the audience. And your question represents the audience. So I have to verify it. And I have to say the disclaimer. In case that this is true, whether I believe it is true or not. So you don't take it and you say, well, the Sheikh said that you are an adulteress. I never said so. I said, number one, we have to investigate. For eight years, he was gone. And he doesn't know that his wife give birth three times. Something is definitely not straight there. Okay? But if a woman conceives without being married, that's an act of adultery. When a woman conceives actually and her husband is not been with her for months because he's abroad, this is definitely an act of fornication. May Allah guide us to what is best. Sister Caroline. Caroline is asking, I'm a single sister. Some uh, Muslim brothers ask me to be with them. I don't really know the meaning of to be with them. But if I'm not ready for a relationship right now, should I continue to wait until I'm ready for the step, even though marriage is half of my deen? May I rephrase your question, sister? Okay? Because the word to be with somebody uh, is very ambiguous. You know? It could mean a lot of things. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Sister Fatima from the USA. Assalamu alaikum, brother. How are you? I'm doing fine. Alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking, Sister Fatima. Uh, brother, I have um, one question about uh, zakat. Okay. Do we have to, um, uh, after calculating, do we have to give the zakat away by the end of Ramadan, or uh, can we give later after Ramadan also? Because a few people come after Ramadan also to... Um, uh, ask for zakat. Sister Fatima, which kind of zakat you're asking about? It's uh, zakat for the entire year. The, the vault, okay, the then you're asking about zakat on the wealth. The compulsory. Yes, zakat the compulsory on one's wealth. Zakat. Right, okay. Zakat on one's wealth, yes. Correct. Zakat on one's wealth, the date of the payment of the zakat is and could be different from one person to another based on what determines the date of the payment of the zakah is not Ramadan or Sha'ban or January what determines the date is the actual date on which you started possessing certain amount which we call it the Nisab we check out the value of 85 gram of gold or the value of 595 gram of silver if it reaches, if it is for innocence uh, for example, um, 4,000 US dollar. And last year on Sha'ban, I've been working and I saved the sum of 4,000. So that is an Nisab. Next lunar year, okay, Sha'ban next year, how much do they have? It has become 8,000. You pay Zakat on that. It's still 4,000. That is an Nisab. You still pay Zakat on that. Oh, it's only 3,000. Then you don't pay any zakah because at the due date of the payment of the zakah, you don't possess the amount which we call it zakatable. 
how much is the value uh, you know exactly right now I'm not sure because it fluctuates and the standard is how much worth 595 gram of silver or 85 gram of gold so if your due date of the payment of zakah happens to be in Rajab or Sha'ban or the first of Ramadan you're not allowed to postpone it until Eid or after Eid you only have a few days to dispense the zakah not weeks okay so once again brothers and sisters once the zakah is due and we just learn when is it due your due date is different than mine different than my wives you know every individual position will determine the due date then you must pay it next year on exactly the due date you can pay it in advance no problem but on the due date and a few days after you should have finished with your zakah the sister before we take a break sister caroline there is no meeting with a non-mahram men unnecessary to go out with them to get to know them or to be with them it's as simple as that whoever is interested in marrying you and if you're interested let him meet your guardian and if there is chemistry bismillah proceed on get engaged and so on otherwise it is not permissible in islam my dear brothers and sisters, we're going to take a short break and we'll be back inshallah in a couple of minutes. Please stay tuned. We welcome you, month we all adore. We pray for happiness. <laughs> محمد رسول الله. The best stories are the stories mentioned in the Quran. The best speech is the speech of Allah in the Quran. And the best of all other human beings are the messengers of Allah. We would listen, inshallah ta'ala, to some beautiful recitations from verses in the Quran that talks about the messengers of Allah. Join us in Quran Circle. We welcome you, month we all adore. We pray for happiness. During the life of the Prophet, وسلم, Ramadan was the host for the occurrence of important historical events and for great people to rise or pass on, which is knowing the causes of the revelation and relating to those uh, circumstances. So you will look what is asbab al nuzul the causes of revelation. So you don't feel like I'm doing a favor to the poor. It is his money. It is something obligatory upon you. And even in the charity, which is volunteer act, when you give it, you should have it framed this way. By nature, we are social creatures. We need someone to socialize with. So Allah created for Adam his spouse. That's why spouse, the best thing of having a spouse is to have a companion. A book, that, a blessed book we have sent to you. For what purpose? So they will reflect upon the verse.
كتاب أنزلناه إليك مبارك ليدبروا آياته وليتذكر أولو الألباب Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Um, our phone numbers and contact information should appear on the bottom of the screen. Area code 002 then 01005469323 and the WhatsApp number calls only and only during the live show please. Okay, uh, the phone doesn't stop ringing 24 hours, mashaAllah. Area code 001-347-806-0025. And also I'm taking the questions from my page. We're going live on my page. That is M. Salah uh, official. Um, we have a question here about Salatul Awabin. Can I pray between Maghrib and Isha? It is permissible and recommended to pray Nawafil between Maghrib and Isha. But in fact, you can pray uh, two by two, you can pray six rakahs between Maghrib and Isha. But in fact, the name Awabin is given to the Duha prayer. Since in the sound hadith, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, Salatul Awabin hina tarmadul fisal. Okay? So that is Salatul Awabin. It is a Duha prayer. And it's the best time to offer it. Okay? The Awabin prayer is like an hour or so before noon, before Zuhr time. This is when it is really hot, whenever it is the hottest part of the day. <coughs> uh, um Ramiza is asking you, Sheikh, can I take 2.5% from my husband's money, which he keeps with me and pay zakah without his permission? I want to ask you a question. Does he pay zakah or he doesn't? If he doesn't, take it and pay but just confirm that he is not paying the zakah because he may be uh, giving his zakah and on the other hand he's giving also voluntary charity and he doesn't share with you okay um, a, a, a woman whenever she gives in a charity from her husband's money he will be rewarded definitely and she will be rewarded too but when you're saying zakah you know this is something very serious you have to remind your husband, you have to alert him that this is not optional. If you don't pay zakah, this is very, very problematic. So you say, why don't you trust me of taking care of the zakah? Because I'm afraid that he's paying, and you don't know about that, and you end up taking also from his uh, money. Uh, okay, thank you all of you, mashallah. May Allah bless you and grant you success. Nice wishes and prayers may Allah accept from all of you um, there is a question I'd like to know uh, if having a loan in an Islamic bank is riba and is a bit uh, is Bitcoin riba I'm not play, playing Bitcoin but there are clothes to engage in the game okay Um Aisha will answer your question inshallah after this call Brother Anwar from the case eh Assalamu alaikum, Ya Sheikh. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you? I'm doing wonderful, alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Uh, Sheikh, uh, a simple question previously I have asked, but probably because of multiple questions, maybe it was missed out or dropped uh, even in the darash. Alhamdulillah, you are answering and making our life better. Alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. Uh, okay, the question is, uh, again, uh, in India we have uh, our accounts and where we have to take our interest. Mm. If we don't like it, also they, they pay the interest. Mm. So normally we go and give it to people, non-Muslims, but can it be given to Muslims? Okay. That was the question. That is all. Okay. Got your question, Brother Okay, Amar. sir. Thank you very much. Is like you know, this matter is really problematic for uh, for all of us. 
not for most of us I would say for all of us every one of us who has to put his money his saving in a bank account and the brother is feeling sorry because he says in India we have and says who that only in India where you're living right now you know everywhere in Muslim countries you know conventional banks are all over and riba is so widespread the believers do their best to distance themselves from usually which destroy their homes destroy their families and withdraws baraka from uh, their lives so the question is how to go about it I know that the interest is for innocence 500 bucks what am I supposed to do with them with the Rodi 500 bucks and get rid of them how to dispense them to whom who's the recipient who's eligible you know anything but not the masjid you don't invest it in the masjid okay yani, can I give it to an orphanage permissible we have a, a poor neighbor can I give it to him permissible poor Muslims yes permissible for him he has nothing to do with the source it's not stolen money so for him as a recipient it is halal and for you you got rid of the interest you got rid of the usury you're not blameworthy alhamdulillah because that was the only option available for you once we have Islamic banking like if you have a rajhi for instance and another conventional bank and you choose to put in a conventional bank while the Islamic bank provides all the banking facilities then you're blameworthy oh but I take the interest and I get rid of it it is not about getting rid of the interest they take your money and they lend it with interest you know may Allah guide us toward his best so a short answer can I give it to Muslims who are poor yes you may but not to family members of course and same to all of you may Allah bless you may Allah accept your dua and our dua for you um, I, I truly love you all for the sake of Allah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Sister Zainab from the USA Wa alaikum salam Would you please raise your voice Sister Zainab The sound is very poor Can you raise your voice Or the, the brothers can you raise the volume of the speakers in the studio Yes. Can you hear me now, Shida? Yes, I can. Okay. Uh, alaikum, Sheikh. I called you last week too, that Huda TV is not coming here in America. Okay, but you're watching me right now on uh, on uh, online. Yes, I'm watching on the. Yes, I am. Yeah, but I'm not able to do it live streaming. But I'm see watching your videos on your Facebook page okay. and the recorded ones. Okay. The, yes sister Zainab the reason we're doing so because really 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 you know we are struggling to survive so that doesn't cost me much to air it here otherwise everything cost you know it's been a few months we're not able to pay the uh, the cost the employees you know even <laughs> though even though the salaries are very insignificant but somebody have to come up with that so that's why we are not going uh, you know on the live streaming because it was disconnected uh, the phone lines unfortunately uh, are not working the landlines so we are doing our best make dua that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us prosper so that we will continue Ameen. and for the time being Ameen. inshallah and until we create another YouTube channel you can go ahead and watch the live streaming on my page okay do you have any questions sister Zainab no, Sheikh. Jazakallah khair. Jazana wa iyakum. Thank you so much. Ameen. May Allah bless you and your family. Barakallah fikum. Thank you. Wa fikum barak. Okay. Because the questions keep coming, mashaAllah, I, I, I lose them. Um, <coughs> the question about uh, what does it mean to dream that Surah Al-Ikhlas is written on the walls and I'm reading in Surah in my dream it, it does mean Kurshida uh, Kurshida Kazim it means a beautiful thing but what does it mean exactly I don't know seeing the Quran in a dream is such glad tidings and good news especially when you see a verse which delivers good news or the verse of Tawheed so 
it could be uh, a sign of inviting you to attach more to the Tawheed, to study your Aqeedah, to learn your belief. I do not interpret dreams though, but only because I saw that it's a good thing. I wanted to share with you that it's a good thing. Assalamu alaikum. Another Muhsin from India. Assalamu alaikum, Muhsin. Yes, uh, uh, yes sir. Uh, Sheikh, I have one question uh, regarding uh, um, uh, is it permissible? We can add in Durud Ibrahim, Fil Alamina in Nakahmidum Majid in Salah. Is it uh, uh, permissible? This is where, what we actually say. Ala Ibrahim, Ala Ali Ibrahim, Fil Alamina in Nakahmidum Majid. Fil Alamina in Nakahmidum Yes, I can say in Salah also. It's no problem. It, yeah, Akhi Mohsen, it is actually prescribed in the prayer. There are different formats. Ah. Okay, so you can say. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد أرف العالمين إنك حميد مجيد That is permissible. Oh, okay, thank you, Sheikh. بارك الله فيك. And your yes, Muslim. Yes, that's very sir. Thank Allah you. Allah you and your family. Amen. Rafia Khan, Sister Rafia is saying my father expired in Toronto 24th of May during Ramadan, but buried on the 25th in Jumu'ah prayer. Will he be asked questions in the grave in Ramadan and on Juma uh, prayer? Uh, first of all, may Allah have mercy on your father. May Allah make his grave a garden of paradise and fill it with nur for him. Amen. When the person dies, he will not be questioned about anything that happened after his death that he was not responsible for. That he was not responsible for. We are taught by the Prophet وسلم, that the Sunnah is to hasten to bury the dead person. Okay? When he died on a day which he uh, was fasting, this is a good sign that this person, insha'Allah, man khutima lahu bisiyam. Whoever ended up his life while fasting, this is a good sign that this person will go to heaven. Man khutima lahu Whoever gave any charity, then he died soon after. Somebody was praying and he died during the prayer. These are all good indications that the person had a great conclusion of his life. Anything that happened after his life, he is not responsible for. But dying on, uh, uh, you know, on Thursday, then being buried on, on Friday, uh, you know, sometimes it is needed in order to gather the community members or family members who are abroad and they are arriving. All of that is permissible. But it shouldn't be longer than that. Burying and hastening to bury the dead person is a sunnah. Barakallahu feekum and may Allah have mercy on your late father, Sister Rafia. Uh, okay, I just answered your question, Muhsin. I just read it here as well. Uh, Shari Omar, Shari is saying, I had musk on my socks and I forgot about it. So I took it out, or took one of them out, but I remember after I removed them. Then I put them back on. Is my wudu valid, or can I still pray? Well, according to the vast majority of the Muslim Jews, the fuqaha, that when you wipe over your socks, over your leather boot, or shoes, or socks, which cover the ankles, because you put them on wudu, and uh, if you take them off, that would invalidate the wudu, then you will have to perform any wudu. Some of our respected lay scholars are of the view that, well, there is no straightforward evidence that taking off the socks which you wipe on or the boot would invalidate the wudu. But if you will have to make a new wudu, then you cannot wipe on it, them again because you put them on quickly, as you said in your case. So the best is to take them off and perform wudu according to the opinion of the vast majority of the scholars. Barakallahu feekum, uh, Sister Shari. Uh, okay, Sister Rafia is sending a clarification. Will he be in paradise because he died in Ramadan and buried on Friday after uh, uh, afternoon prayer? Well, what did I say? These are all good indications, you know, for a person not because he died in Ramadan, but because he was fasting, because he was a believer. Or maybe he was sick and he wasn't able to fast, but in normal cases he used to fast. 
okay but there are a lot of Muslims a lot of non-Muslims who die in Ramadan and die on Friday it doesn't mean that any person who dies on Ramadan they go straight to, he straight to heaven there are some Muslims who die in Ramadan and on Friday on Thursday evening Friday night and they didn't pray or they died while drinking or they died and they were not fasting deliberately so they are excluded but dying on Friday or the night of Friday of course uh, is a good sign and uh, they will be protected from the torment of the grave and inshallah they will go uh, to heaven may Allah have mercy on him and all our late brothers and sisters Allahumma ghfir li hayyina wa may li hayyina wa mayyitina wa dhakarina wa unthana wa hadirina wa ghaibina Allahumma ghfir lana wa li sa'iri al-muslimina wa al-muslimat Rabbana ghfir lana wa li walidina wa al-mu'minina wa al-mu'minat ya maqumu al-hisab by that my dear respected brothers and sisters we've come to the end of today's edition of Ask Huda until tomorrow inshallah I leave you all in the care of Allah wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Allah is my heart's speech Your mercy is what I beseech Keep in my heart your remembrance and in your deen allow me to advance Help me in my quest Permit me to pass the ultimate test Help me in my quest Permit me to pass the ultimate test Allah is my heart's speech Your mercy is what I beseech Keep in my heart your remembrance and in your